perfect. Welcome everyone to the nerdiest conversation you're going to have all week. I hope you're excited. Okay. Like tech we'll nerdy though. We'll see what we can do. Um, we're going to talk about links, links that are the glue of the internet. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. So who are your, your chief nerds here? Um, my name is Jesse Lakes. I am the co-founder of Genius Link. Uh, Genius Link is, thankfully, one of the original universal book linker tools. Um, I've been in the marketing space for 17 years and just uh, last summer finished my second book. Um, got Austin here. How's it going, everyone? My name is Austin Twiner. I'm in charge of growth and, and marketing for both book linker and Genius Link. I have around seven years experience in the marketing tech fields and I've been working on my first book for about 25 years now. You'll get there. So what, what is a UBL? What is a universal book link? Um, what's a, it's called a lot of different things in private. It's sworn at quite a few uh, times. But in general, it can be referred to as a universal link, a smart URL, an intelligent link. Um, but it's really important to note that a universal book link is not just a short link. It's not just a book link. These universal book links are special. Let me tell you why they're special. First of all, they're universal. Uh, they work around the world. Uh, they also have evolved a lot in the last handful of years to support uh, those authors that are going wide with their distribution strategy uh, and enable what we call a multi-retailer uh, ability to include multiple different sellers of, of your book. The book piece is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, typically, a universal book link is used to promote just a single individual book. Uh, at times, we see them uh, also used to in, uh, market authors' uh, bio pages as well on Amazon, etc., across the universal audience. And it's a link, right? It's a, it's a URL. It's the uh, HT, the hypertext in HTTP or the HTML. It's, um, yeah, the, the, the nerdy part of it. All right, so that's enough technical talk. You guys are probably wondering what a universal book link actually looks like in practice. So there's two main types of universal book links, as Jesse referred to. The first one is going to be one that authors maybe are exclusive to Amazon. Um, you can see it's just a, a URL. And depending on the IP or country, that the reader that passes through the link lives in, uh, the link will detect it and automatically send them to the right Amazon storefront. There's also uh, another type of universal book link that you might see, and this is for authors that go wide. And this is basically a landing page that's hosted at an example URL, and it's going to include all the different bookstores that um, an author um, is, has listed their books on. OK, so why? are these universal book links so important? Why should I drop everything and start using a universal book link? And that's a great question, and we have six good answers for you. So first and foremost, it's really about those international readers, right? A lot of us are uh, English speakers based here in the US and just kind of consider the US as our, our core and only market. Unfortunately, there's a lot of readers reading English-based books all around the world, and a universal book link is really geared to help you take advantage of that. Taking a step back, this problem all starts with what we call geofragmentation. And it's the idea that these major retailers, as they want to grow and expand, they start to create different country and region specific storefronts. And as they expand, those different storefronts are optimized for that very specific uh, audience. And Amazon is a perfect example here, right? Amazon now exists in 22 different countries. There's 22 different storefronts. Uh, they're specifically geared for those different audiences. A uh, picture here of uh, what I would consider Amazon's global domination strategy. You can see they're slowly taking over the world. But what's really important to see here is that for each of these different countries, you have to realize that Amazon has spent millions, if not billions of dollars, optimizing that store for that specific region. Uh, as an author, we all know it's pretty easy to, to sell worldwide, right? Uh, for those of you that recognize inside KDP, this is the third page of publishing a book. It's really just one click to have that book work worldwide, to be distributed worldwide. It's obviously a little bit more challenging in the marketing side, which is why we're having this universal book linking conversation. But even outside of just Amazon and, and uh, KDP, you know, a lot of these other awesome uh, distributors, publishers can help you go worldwide across multiple different retailers as well. So we talk about Amazon and Amazon being a great example of this geofragmentation piece. Let's just kind of unpack that for a second, right? So here in the US, Amazon.com is our preferred store. For those that live in the UK, uh, Amazon.co.uk is the preferred store. How are those different, right? So first and foremost, Amazon.com versus Amazon.co.uk, the, the URL starts differently. They also often have unique ASINs, unique identifiers. 
The second piece is that you can optimize the different covers, right? One cover, you know, highlights the author's name, the other highlights the, uh, the title of the book. It's the same book, it's the same author, uh, but it has different cover art to, to help with the distribution. Reviews are different as well. Uh, maybe a little bit hard to see here, but you know, it's 4.6 stars versus 4.5, 144,000 reviews versus 120,000. But the most important is that currency, that price, and that format. Right? U.S. dollars, we're comfortable with that. I'm not sure how many people right now can tell me what the conversion rate from a U.S. dollar to a Great British Pound is and if this book is you know, on sale or not. So we want to you know, transact in our local currency. We want to buy in the format that's best for us. If you look closely on this U.K. side, you'll notice they have, they're selling Audible CDs or audio CDs. Sorry. You know, what's the last time that you didn't use Audible or uh, you know, bought your audio book on an actual physical copy? It seems to be still a, a preferential format in the U.K. So when we have an audience around the world and we have different stores that are optimized to sell to them, the best solution, again, is a universal book link, a tool that will localize where, where that reader is able to buy that, that, link for, or that book for you. When they can geotarget who clicks on that link, when they can translate that link into the local version and ensure that reader has that seamless buying experience, you know, the universal book link is really adding a lot of value for you. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Moving on to... Reason number two why we think all authors should use universal book links is to better support authors that, that go wide. Here we have a, a GIF I found, or a GIF I made after taking a look at the author Rupi Carr's website. Um, she's uh, you know, coded up a pretty advanced widget here where a reader that's interested in buying her book will first have to select which, which country they live in, and then the, the bookstores that are supported in those countries are, are then shown, shown below. Um, this works great on a website, but it's not gonna work on something like social media or an email blast as well. It's, it's somewhat advanced code that most authors are probably not gonna be able to create theirsel themselves. And it, it requires a lot of upkeep to, to, to keep the stores updated in real time. So what we recommend is what, uh, for example, uh, the author Austin Cleon is, is using. On his author website, he just has one simple call to action that says buy it now in, in hardcover. And then he's uh, a reader's taken to a dedicated landing page that lists all of the bookstores his, his book is, is listed on. And that's also going to have all the localization or geotargeting benefits that we, we mentioned earlier. You guys are probably wondering what's the difference between just putting all those buttons on an author website versus having them on a dedicated landing page. And uh, I would say the main benefit of this is just getting those micro conversions, the, the velocity going towards a sale. Um, pretty much when you're doing marketing on the internet, you want to follow the idea of one page, one goal. So on an author website, there's gonna be a lot of different information for, for a reader to click. We just wanna make it really simple for them to, to make the first step in the process and click buy now. And then they'll be taken to a mobile optimized, uh, distraction free landing page where they can then go ahead pick and pick the store of choice. So just as a, a quick aside, obviously we're talking about book marketing here, but from some experiments we've ran on the GeniusLink side, we found that by giving uh, consumers a choice in where they're actually able to buy, they'll reward you with a much higher conversion rate. Uh, from some testing that we've done, it, we see a 2.2 to 2.4 increase in conversion rate when you give those users that, that choice of where they actually want to purchase instead of just shoving them all straight to say Amazon. So the third reason why universal book links are so important, and that's really just to clean up your copy, right? Make your messaging very succinct when you are doing a blast. So DK Dieters here is doing, doing great to just get out and, and try marketing her book. Uh, but unfortunately, this, this tweet, there's a lot of things wrong with it. First and foremost, I see some heads shaking here. First and foremost, um, there's, just, there's too many links, and this leads to what we call cognitive dissonance, right? It's, it's hard for anyone to choose the right link for them, so they often ignore it and move on. So with the way this, link, or with the way this tweet is formatted, the uh, odds that it's converting well are probably quite low. Uh, the second piece of it is you have to really pay attention to understand what those links are for. Uh, it looks like Amazon US, Amazon Australia, et cetera, but what if, what if you don't live in one of those countries? You know, what, what do you do in that case? So not, not a great situation here. But DK is not alone. You know, Frederick Fox has a, a similar issue here. Lots of different links to choose be between. And what if you don't actually live in one of the countries that has a link for it? AJ is, is not alone. You know, AJ only has two links here. Uh, but again, what happens if you're coming from Australia? It's, it's hard to decide which of those is the right link for you. Uh, Shirley here has a slightly different issue. Shirley's asking for some help uh, in cross-promoting her book and includes an amazon.co.uk link. 
Thankfully, the indie author community is super helpful, uh, and Shirley's got a response from uh, one, of the, one of the other authors in the group, you know, looks interesting. You might consider using a universal uh, link. It would help those of us not in the UK find your book. It's easy to use and free. Uh, thankfully, again, AJ has an awesome community as well. Indie authors support each other. Uh, found, found universal links very ha uh, hel helpful. It's, um, it saves you from having to post two links. Uh, just a single link will work there. Uh, you don't need to post all those links. You can do a single link made uh, at BookLink for free in each book and author page. It will automatically take the person to the Amazon page in their region. So again, author community stepping up to help people end up with hopefully cleaner, tighter marketing copy. Here's a tweet that I really like. It's uh, very well parsed out, lots of good white space. You have your social proof. You have a call to action with an emoji, which is brilliant. A universal book link there, title, and some hashtags. It's clean, it's easy to read, there's one step forward, it's a clean call to action. All right, moving on to reason number four, why we think all authors should use universal book links is that you gain actionable insights and analytics that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, I'm sure we've, we've all seen this dashboard before, I hope you have more sales than, than we do here, but there's, there's very limited information you get, your, get here. You know, you have your royalties, orders, if you're running Amazon ads, you may have an idea um, from Amazon how that marketing channel is performing, but a lot of other marketing channels you're going to be left in the dark on. So if you take advantage of a, a universal book link tool or a link management provider, you gain access to a lot more uh, data points or analytics that can help you be more, a more informed marketer. So the first and, and probably most beneficial um, data point that you can look at is a, a chart of your clicks over time. This can help give you a better idea of um, you know, you can align this chart with a certain book promotion that you did or, or zoom out and, and view a trend of, of how your marketing is performing over time. Um, you also gain access to referrer data. So if you're doing, if you're marketing your universal book links on a lot of different channels, you can see which channels are performing really well. In this example, Facebook has over 95% of the clicks on this link. So he's doing something right there, but Instagram is at like 5%. So he's gonna have to change up his Instagram strategy. Another data point you get to look at is the destination. This is especially important if you're using a, a wide landing page. You can gain some insights into which destination or, or bookstore readers prefer. Again, we'd, we'd, we'd expect uh, Amazon.com or USA to, to be the largest one, but what you maybe wouldn't expect, at least for this author, is that Amazon India was the, the second most, most common option, and bookshop.org was the third. So I don't know if, if, if it wouldn't be obvious necessarily without the use of a link management tool or universal book link. You can also gain insight into what the preferred language is of, of your audience. Um, in this case, again, English is number one, but maybe what an author doesn't know is that a decent portion of their audience speaks Spanish, Portuguese, German, and it could make sense for you to prioritize uh, book translation to, to some of these countries or languages. The last data point we'll, we'll highlight here is that you can look at a world map and see where in the world uh, your audience lives. You may, you may know already that they speak English, but maybe you don't know whether to run ads in Canada, um, Australia, uh, United Kingdom, or, or countries like that. So just getting insight into where around the world your audience lives is, is something you may not have uh, without the use of universal book links. Yeah, good to see Australia there. That might be a good place to uh, maybe do a book tour. Who knows? Uh, the next reason why Universal Book Link is so important is really around readable and trusted links. So Bitly, the 800-pound gorilla in the link shortening space, which again is different than the Universal Book Linking space, uh, Bitly did a case study a number of years ago that talked about how readability led to trust and trust led to an improvement in click-through rate. I don't know anyone here that wouldn't appreciate a 34% increase in their click-through rate for their marketing activity. So let's unpack that a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, we see all sorts of different links being used in marketing. Uh, this, this link is, is horrible. This is the link you would probably find if you just jumped on your web browser, went to Amazon, and found uh, a specific book and shared that link. It's, it's long, there's letters, numbers, there's percent signs in here. Uh, this, is, this is just not something that someone could type in. It's not a good marketing, uh, marketing link. We can clean that up though. Uh, so this link and that previous link went to the same destination. Um, this one link obviously got rid of all that extra stuff at the end. Um, and this, this is better. You know, it's, it's, we, we shaved off quite a few characters, letters and numbers. Uh, and it's, it's readable, but, but barely. It's a little bit harder there. So again, not a great solution, but headed in the right direction. 
take that one step further, we clean out some of that text in the middle. This link will go to the same destination as the previous two, but we're starting to trade some of that legibility for readability, right? We, we don't know what this, this link is for, right? Amazon sells all sorts of stuff. Is it for a book? Is it for the book you're looking for? We, we're not sure. You can make it shorter. Uh, here we, again, ran it through bit.ly, a uh, URL shortener. Uh, it's, it's much much tighter, 21 characters here, uh, letters and numbers. But we traded short for, for trustworthiness, right? We don't know if this is going to go to Amazon. We don't know if it's going to go to a book. It may go to malware. Um, it's, it's a little bit challenging to, to trust this link is going to the right destination. So ultimately, in our opinion, a universal book link is your best choice here for improving conversion rate by being short, consisting of just letters so it can be typed in, but also giving the, the reader a little bit of an idea of where it goes. My book, too. That inspired, you know, it gives you an idea you're going to leave somewhere to go to somewhere to buy a book. And that book is probably about stealing time. That's probably its title. So that universal book link combines kind of all the aspects to increase that conversion rate and makes it way easier than that, you know, <laughs> humongous, enormous, ugly URL that we got straight from our browser. Please don't use those. Um. All right, moving on to number six is the concept of ensuring that your, your links remain future-proof. Uh, quick story. Before this talk, I was in Melissa Storm's um, presentation on Facebook ads, and I was, I was walking up to the front, and I saw somebody's computer open. They had Genius Link up, and I told them that we were doing this talk. And I asked her, what's, what's your favorite thing about Genius Link as an author? And she's, she, she said number six here, just ensuring that no matter what happens, she's always able to edit the destinations of her links and, and making sure they stay online. So I'm sure we can all relate to, to some of these images here. We get recommended a, a book or a product only to find that when we click through it that it's either out of stock or maybe it leads to a 404 error, which is uh, pretty much a dead end buying experience for, for an author and we, we don't want that. So what we can do to prevent this is using some sort of link management tool. And by using a link management tool, you can essentially wrap the book link um, in, a, in a custom link as we showed. And at any point in time, you can edit the destination of where that link heads. So that's another super powerful feature of uh, universal book links. Do you want to mention link rot and, and yeah. what leads to it? So link rot is actually the, the, the name of a link breaking on the internet, and it happens more and more all the time. And for an author, there's very specific reasons why it does, right? If you go from exclusive to wide or wide to exclusive, you know, some of those links will, will fall off. Um, if you are you know, have your rights that are going between publisher or you, or you're, you're getting it back, unfortunately, you may have to re-upload, and those links will change. Uh, or <laughs> the most famous, which we probably all made the mistake of, is just a simple copy and paste mistake that you really don't realize until that email newsletter has actually been sent. So that future proofing, that insurance for links is, is, is pretty, pretty important. Okay, I like bonuses. Bonus content is good, but bonuses that are cash are even better. And the seventh reason why you should use a universal book link is really around affiliate links. Um, a lot of the major book retailers offer affiliate programs. They will reward you for sending sales and traffic into their store. Uh, and you often can use a universal, or sorry, a affiliate link within a universal book link. So you can earn not only a royalty from selling the book, but you can earn a commission uh, from recommending the, the sales of that book as well. Um, obviously, the affiliate space is something that uh, we, we care a lot about as well. If it's something you'd like to hear more about, let Craig or Joe know, and maybe we can do a session on that. I also have a few books here. Um, happy to hand away, uh, hand out if you guys are interested in learning more on the affiliate side. Um, but that's yeah, your number seven is uh, earning some additional money from Universal Book Links and leveraging affiliate. So we talked about why you should use a Universal Book Link. Now let's talk about how you should use those or where you might want to use those. And again, we have, surprise, surprise, six different good reasons for you. So the first is really on your, your website, uh, an author website. So, um, you know, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck is a, a pretty popular book. Uh, Mark Manson's a, a, a great author, uh, a very professional website here. But I have one complaint, and that goes back to something that Austin was mentioning earlier, that whole idea of one page, one goal. Uh, when you have a lot of distractions on your page and you have seven different ways to buy that book, I would argue that your conversion rate's probably not nearly as good as it would be if you had just a single link. Now, back to what uh, Austin was mentioning as well, that whole idea of micro-conversions, right? Gets people to move down the funnel piece by piece can really help them actually finish that journey and buy the product that you're recommending. So one button to buy and then one page to include the different options seems like a much better flow and from what we've seen is uh, much higher for conversion rate. The second place we've seen authors use universal book links uh, most commonly is across social media platforms. Uh, so it's Twitter, X, uh, whatever people are calling it these days, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest. 
Um, Instagram and TikTok are pretty similar in the fact that they, they make it very difficult for traffic to, to leave the platform. On, in Instagram's case, really the only way to, to leave the app and, and make a purchase is going to be through a link in bio. Also, if you're familiar, you can do a story on Instagram and there's a sticker that you can put in there and have a, a custom destination. So those are the two main ways where, where traffic can leave Instagram. TikTok similar, you have the, the link in bio. Um, if you're running paid traffic campaigns on TikTok, they'll give you an external link slot there where people can leave the app. And uh, for some verif or verified creators on TikTok, they do give you the option to use stickers in, in direct traffic off the app, but this is still pretty new and they have only a few whitelisted uh, destinations where you can send traffic off to and, and Amazon, at least last time I checked, was, was not one of those. Moving on to Pinterest, we have uh, Megan Quinn promoting her book here, So Not Meant to Be. And Pinterest is different than Instagram and TikTok in that it's like a, a virtual or a, a visual search engine. Visual search engine. It, it's a lot easier for, for traffic to leave the platform here. Uh, that's pretty much what it's designed to do. Um, however, you only really get one external link slot on Pinterest. And considering around 20 to 25% of Pinterest users are American, um, if you provide an Amazon USA link, you, you might be in trouble and, and leaving some sales on the table. So it's great to see a universal book link uh, being used here. Back to this Twitter example, I know Jesse already highlighted a lot of the things that Ken Stark is, is doing right here, but I, th I just want to point out that the importance of character limits on Twitter. And if you're providing a link for every single country storefront page, or maybe if you're wide, you're, pr you're, you're providing links to different bookstores, you're going to run out of characters real quick. But by using a short, concise, readable, universal book link, he's able to do the social proof, the call to action to buy, as well as some hashtags, which is going to get that tweet circulating more. Lastly, Facebook, we have an example of Jen Gray, who's promoting her book here. And I just want to point out the use of a universal book link. Um, again. There's not limited characters on Facebook, but you have limited characters before the see more or the expand section goes. So by utilizing a universal book link, she can serve all the different countries and bookstores that readers could, could possibly want to go to. Whereas if she listed all of them out, she, people would have to click see more. And by doing this, she's massively increasing the click-through rate of traffic that, that sees this post on her uh, Facebook author page. Awesome. Social media obviously is super important for staying in touch with your readers and helping promote your books, but I would argue that an even more important avenue is, is your newsletter, your email newsletter. Um, similar to the one page, one goal, uh, we believe that one newsletter, one goal is also makes a lot of sense. It's also very likely that the subscribers to your newsletter are, are from around the world. Uh, so again, a universal book link just makes a lot of sense to be included in, inside, of your, inside of your email. Um, if you are leveraging the affiliate side of um, Universal Book Links as well, Amazon in particular has a, a rule around you're not allowed to use affiliate links directly in emails. So that's where uh, one of those, those uh, landing pages that we call them choice pages uh, makes a lot of sense. Amazon is just fine with you sending a link from your email to the landing page and from the landing page to Amazon as an affiliate link. But just a, a quick heads up that you don't want to go direct from uh, a newsletter to, to Amazon leveraging affiliate because that is a, a violation of their operating agreement happy to go into details on that later if that's of any interest, but it's uh, unfortunately one way they, they can get you. Uh, Universal book links are also great in your, your email signature. Uh, every email you send out, include that link so that your readers can, uh, can see that or your, your business partners can see that as well. All right, place number four, where we see authors using Universal book links is just offline. So this can be anything from, say, um, the, your book's back matter. We have one author here who put her personal author website it's not so common that an author website would, would change URLs, but it is possible. So because she put the author website in, in plain text, it's not using a link management tool. If it were to change or go offline, then again, that's an example of link rot. Uh, we have another example from Jesse's book, Mastering Amazon Associates, where throughout the book, we, we decide to use QR codes and link to some blog posts. So if at any point in time, our domain changed, or maybe we just changed the URL or the title of the page, that could change the the link and it would no longer work. So even though our books are physical, our, our links do not have to be and, and we can future-proof them by using a link management tool. Ads, everyone's favorite topic of course. Uh, once again, another great place to use universal book links. Um, again, with uh, this last book that we, uh, that we published, I got the opportunity to, to do some ads and uh, they ended up in Forbes, super excited about that. 
But the people that read Forbes come from around the world. And again, making sure that they had a clean user experience, were able to get to the book to actually be able to buy it, it was important to use a, a universal book link. Uh, two quick asides here that when you are using Amazon as one of your destinations and you are doing ads, an attribution link inside your universal book link can also be helpful. Amazon's attribution links can be quite valuable in helping you kind of get more granularity and understanding what is and isn't working. Uh, on top of that, if you're going to put money uh, behind a, a link, always test that link. You should always be testing your links anyway, but really encourage you to test your links before you do any sort of ad campaign against them. Okay, reason, or place six, where we see authors use universal book links is inside of link in bio tools. As much as we would love for you to use our universal book links uh, everywhere, we actually don't recommend that you place the uh, universal book links inside of your uh, bio link slot on social media platforms. It's because it's, it's pretty limiting and it stops a potential reader from entering the rest of your author ecosystem. You know, they may not be able to as easily find you on other social media uh, platforms. You could be stopping them from going to your author website and, you know, cap. Huh? Give us we'll time. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get, get to, to that. that. Smart. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we don't recommend using a link in bio, um, but we do recommend you use link to your beacons and use the universal book link on top of that. Uh, we actually studied a couple hundred book talk accounts. We did the research, and, and here's what we found found that over 75% of book talkers were using a link in bio tool. Another 10% or so went straight to a personal website, which kind of accomplishes the same goal, but Linktree's probably a lot better there. Found 65% of authors were using Linktree, another 20% using Beacons. So yeah, that's what Linktree's for. Um, as far as the, the number of links inside of a link in bio tool, we found that the most common number was, was seven. Again, we, we want to serve all of the possible intents of a reader opening our, our bio link. We don't just want to shove a book in their face and say buy it now. We want them to learn a bit about us, follow us on other channels. And we also did some research on the number of book links inside of Lincoln Bio Tools, and we found that it ranged between one or four, one to four, but the most common was just one book link inside of a Lincoln Bio Tool. And looking at the placement of the book, like the, the hierarchy, we found that the first position was the most common, but a lot of these link and bio tools have like social media accounts listed above it as like a symbol. So yeah, first position most commonly is the book link as well as second and third. So this is again six good places to use those universal book links. This is not the only six places that those can be used. We are continuously amazed at the creativity of our clients and the places they use their links. So please don't let this uh, be limiting. You know, use this as a foundation of where to start and go from there. Uh, excited to learn something from you next year and where you placed a universal book link and saw great success. So uh, please, please let us know. So by now you're probably asking, we know why we should use them, we know how we should use them, but who can help you out with those? And of course, Austin and I are a little bit biased, you know, having spent a lot of time in the space. I want to be perfectly clear that we are only two of the players in the space. There's a lot of different people that do universal book links. Uh, the two other ones I really want to call out for doing an amazing job are, is the team at Drafted Digital. Uh, books to Read has a, a great tool as well. Um, Mark, uh, who's not here right now, uh, tall guy, uh, is a wealth of information. On top of that, Arthur, Author Helper uh, has a great suite of tools as well. Uh, ben, uh, that works on that team, is a, another great source of information. So lots of different players, uh, lots of different tools. Again, these are the four that you know, we're most familiar with. There are others out there as well, not to knock them by, by any means whatsoever. These are just who we're most familiar with. Uh, further, uh, the four of us uh, were on a panel last year, and uh, it was a bit of a cage match. Got a little rowdy, but we had Dave Cheeson from Atticus to, uh, to calm us down. Uh, but if you want to see that, you're a little interested in, in kind of diving in more between who the different providers are, uh, this, this QR code will take you to last year's YouTube video of the, of the presentation. We had a, a lot of fun there. Oh, hold on, hold on. People are still forming up. Oh, oh, okay. I got to give you guys time, you know. All right. Everyone got it? Awesome. Um, so I guess, yeah, with that, oh, perfect. Look at that. We have 15 minutes left. Um, right on time. Open, open up for questions. You know, happy to be a resource however we can. Um, yeah, I just really want to open. The slides are here as well, but you have them in the, uh, the, uh, the app as well. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for your time, for joining us, and yeah, let it rip. You, 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 you look like you got a loud voice. I was going to say come up to the mic, but I think you can shout. You can shout. Yeah, I believe it. Okay, but then I have to repeat you for our, our online viewers. It's okay. No, no. 
Okay. All right, you guys had me right up until you said Lincoln Bio. I don't know what a Lincoln Bio is. Can you, yeah. Can you so, that? so that's most common on social media platforms, especially Instagram, Twitter, um, and uh, TikTok. Um, we mentioned earlier that these, these platforms purposely restrict the traffic that can leave the platform. That, so that's really the only spot, um, besides a few exceptions, where somebody could leave the application and purchase the book. So Lincoln Bio tools are, are like beacons.ai or Linktree. Um, you can look them up after. Th those are what authors are most commonly putting inside of that social media bio link uh, position. That make, that makes sense or no? The way I think of them is yeah. just microsites that are very simple. List a few different links, and that's essentially all, yeah, all There's it no is. code involved. Um, it's like a user interface to put up the website. If you're not actively promoting on um, TikTok or, or Instagram, don't worry about it. All right, we got another question back there. Yeah. Ninety-nine percent of the time, it's just based off of where they are when they click that link, with some exceptions. The geo, the piece of get nerdy again. The technology behind the geo targeting is based off of your IP address, uh, which is a necessary piece from your browser to the server. Blah blah blah. When you use a VPN or you use some of these other tools to to help uh, with with security or privacy, that can sometimes confuse uh, the the IP as well. So you can, you know, if you're in the U.S. but you're it's typically, if you're in the UK and you're using a US-based VPN, it might treat you as if you're coming from the US. These are kind of niche cases. Um, for the most part, yeah, it's based off of where you click at that point. Uh, and it's at a country level, so it's usually, I don't know, like 99.8% accurate. Um, the other question had been for, oh, you recommend using Great Sales? So, great question. Um, if you're only selling direct, it can help for a few different reasons, right? Let's go back to most, most of the analytics. I'd say that exactly. you're missing out on in the choice pages. Readable, trusted links. Yeah, the, the analytics, the uh, the future proof. Those are all aspects as well. If you are selling across multiple different retailers um, and you have control of that landing page, putting your direct first. As you know, English readers, we read left to right, so that first spot typically gets about 10x more clicks than the spots afterwards. So, you know, you can put in an order of, of where you prefer to sell. And there are almost logo that says buy and not. Exactly, exactly. Sign books? Giving, yeah, a good reason to include that, we'll, we'll take it one step further. So, yeah, exactly. Sign books is a great, a great reason. But, yeah. You want to go to that slide of Austin Cleon? Um, uh, that was back further, wasn't it? Yeah. All the way back. Oh, oh, there, you, there you go. So... That's what we call a choice page at Genius Link, and you can manually edit those to be whatever you want. So you could put your um, direct sale link as that le top leftmost spot, um, and then still include those other options, or if you just wanted it to be a direct sale link and gain all the other benefits of universal book links, you, you could do that too. A great question. Another one? I'll get real nerdy. Um, Please. What about including UTM support? Absolutely. So UTM works really well, obviously, if you're sending traffic back to your site. Obviously, Amazon doesn't care about your UTM parameters. So uh, depending on which platforms you're using, you can include the UTMs as, as well. Um, well, I was talking more about UTMs for the, uh, for VDL. So it makes it a little bit longer, but then I know where it's coming from to VDL. Yeah, different platforms will um, support that in different ways. Um, with the Genius Link side, we've got a track parameter. That track will then get passed into your UTM medium campaign or medium value to then be passed onto your website. But yeah, you can custom configure that, especially in Genius Link, to be exactly as you need. So you can yeah place essentially one link in different places or the same link in different places, but have a specific track value. So it's okay, Facebook versus Instagram versus newsletter again, same link. Oh, because you have the uh, that UTM value it, or that track value, you can then get the analytics based off of it. So. Absolutely. That's and a, good for you for, yeah. for knowing to differentiate which your channels are, are being leveraged so you can yeah, really dive in and understand which marketing is working and what isn't. That's a, a pretty advanced use case where a lot of the free uh, universal book link tools are not going to support that, but the, the paid ones you'll, you'll, you'll find have, have support for that. Another question back there? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we had this last slide where we mentioned all the options. If you guys want, we have a little bit of time remaining. We can maybe compare and contrast, but um, it, it's definitely a longer discussion. Maybe afterwards, if you want to come up and, and we can break that down for you. Yeah. Typically, the free ones are simpler, less options, less functionality. The more expensive ones are the ones that are paid for, have a lot of different options. If marketing is not your favorite thing, definitely recommend you start off with free. If you're finding that your marketing is starting to yield rewards and you're looking to, to level up your marketing game, then a premium tool tends, seems to make a bit more sense. Yeah, good question. That's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, with Genius Link we do that. Yeah, we, we check. Um, it, it is a, a pain in the butt, yeah, to know when, when things go out of stock or that, again, you're pointing to a, a product that that's, you can't sell, so it's essentially a 0% conversion because of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, uh, what, what's the difference between Booklinker and Genius Link? And that's, that's a really good question. You go. um, well, you got them, Jesse? The yeah, yeah. Paper. actually, there's a stack of papers on that okay. back seat that, that break that down. Again, um, Booklinker, Genius Link is the, the kind of the core technology. That's, um, that's the company that I've been working on for 12 years now. We made Booklinker a very simplified version of that. Uh, again, we understand a lot of authors uh, don't enjoy marketing. It's a necessary evil for them. So Booklinker is as simplified as it possibly can be um, to give you a universal Booklink. Again, that underlying technology is the same. Genius Link is very, very open-ended. Um, you know, not to not to brag, but we have you know marketers at Apple and Amazon and BMW and and you know many other brands using that same technology because of of the ability to customize. That ability to customize though can get overwhelming. Again, if marketing is not your favorite thing, you know you can take it in steps. But just just a warning that it is more of a premium tool. Sorry, my ego just. <sighs> No, Genius Link is, yeah, it's a paid, yeah, exactly. There, there's a free trial if you want to go in there and mess around, but um, no, it's uh, monthly. Yeah. Thank you for that question. And we, we, we have a lot of testimonials and authors that basically like point out that by paying for any universal book link, they, they typically make the cost back and then some based off of a lot of these benefits that we, that we mentioned. Again, at the end of the day, we don't care which platform you're on. We're just excited for you to level up your marketing and sell more books. Again, that raise, rising tide lifts all ships. A huge believer in that mentality, absolutely. So, yeah, it, if we can work with you, awesome. If you're working with the guys at Drafted Digital or Author Help or one of the other tools, good for you as well. That's we're, we're stoked. It's uh, again just a general education piece to get people to help ensure they're they're you know when someone wants to buy their book, they can easily. All right, another question back there. Awesome. So I'm getting, the reason I changed it is I'm just getting Genius Link. Please don't accuse me of marketing. We're doing something, right? Yeah. So um, I'm trying to figure out what is the advantage because I'm just using Amazon right now, and Amazon is probably as pricey. So, so I, I yeah. Really yeah, I was, I was, analytics, yeah. All these analytics that I could get. Yeah, Jesse, I'll, I'll, I'll Okay, you got, the, you got yeah, the. Yeah, I mean, if you're just on Amazon, I mean, it probably. Going all the way back here, all the way back. I mean, this this is going to be the yeah. This is going to be the most um, obvious example, I'd say, is you're having one link that is automatically going to send people to the correct Amazon um, storefront. Um, yeah, that, that's that's probably what I would say you you use it most for. I, I would take yeah one step further that yeah uh, going forward again we look at the six different reasons. The Genius Link is, you know, providing a lot of these these benefits, right? The the international piece is probably most important, but um, you know, being able to edit that link afterwards, being it you know readable, short, actual insights, etc., are all probably aspects of that as well. But um, yeah, happy to dive in further and, and discuss. That's a uh, happy happy to hear that you're seeing those. So you would recommend for me to start using these, even though I'm only going to Amazon for my publishing. If if you're doing e e yeah. It depends on what type of marketing you're doing. Like if you're only running Amazon ads, probably not. But like if you're doing email list swaps, like you said, it, it would make a lot of sense to, to use them there. 
And when you say only on Amazon, I would that that yeah you know, again third page of of you know getting your your book published on Amazon. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, you probably I'm assuming click the box so that your book is available worldwide on Amazon. Um, so yeah, by only using the Amazon.com link, you're essentially alienating any reader that's outside of the U.S. It's much harder for them to go ahead and buy. <laughs> it's 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 great to hear. Yeah, this this again, this problem affects everyone at at various stages of their of their journey as a, as an author. Um, again, a lot of us like to stick our head in the sand when it comes to marketing, but uh, again, some some basic tools can can really help you pretty significantly ensure that your readers around the world uh, can tell their friends and can can buy more books. Any more questions, guys? These are great questions. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, keep all. them coming. We didn't lose a single person d during the presentation. No, that's not, oh, he's out of here. Uh, any, were there any online questions or, or no? No? Okay, that's okay. All right. It's been easy for us. Thank you all for coming today. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you.